The Saturday started off just about like any other. I was browsing the unofficial Shaboko Nomad user group on Facebook, which has over 20,000 members, which is pretty crazy. And I read something like almost a thousand um, average posts per month. People in this group are amazing. Uh, if you need any help, definitely go to them and uh, the collective will help you out. I then came across a gentleman that was asking which machine would be better suited for his job. He quoted a job that included Costa Machine and it was right up there for the HTM. So obviously quite a few people on that thread started telling him, hey, just get the HTM. I've had the privilege of using the HDM for the past few months just to put it through its paces, see what I like, see what I don't like, and run recipes for it for Proven Cut. I've been thoroughly impressed with this machine and honestly it just works. For a full review, you'll have to check back for a video on that next time. That's not what this video is about. This is just about doing a real world project from start to finish and seeing what happens. All right guys, I did want to start off and say one thing that I do have my laptop plugged into the same circuit as the machine and all of this is running off of this single 110 plugged into here. There you go. Originally, I wanted to add the feeds and speeds and cam in this video as well, but it just would take a little bit too long and I wanted to keep this video short, sweet, to the point showing the whole process. With the part drawn up, the cat and the cam finished, a simulation done and shown all green, good to go. It was time to prep our stock and actually start this project. Good boys. So I've cut the stock and I actually did a super glue setup to another piece of aluminum. But I will cover that in the speeds and feeds video installation number two, part B, whatever you want to call it. This HDM is currently set up with two Saunders Machine Works modular fixture plates. And as you can see, I'm using half the wood slats and half fixture plate and that just kind of gives me the maximum flexibility. Ooh, this is my favorite part. These fixturing pins are my favorite. Don't ask about that multi-tool. <laughs> They're in the works, maybe, kind of, sort of. This is the first one that I actually made and um, it's a little tight for the fit, but uh, I since changed the program. It's still fun to use. I, I love using tools that I've made, you know? It's just that whole from scratch thing. tools I'll be using for this project. This is a Lakeshore Carbide Center Drill. It's a 364th I believe, right around 37 thou. This is a 4 millimeter carbide drill. And that's actually the fun part about this machine is because it's so rigid you can actually drill uh, up to a certain size and depending on what spindle you have, this is a 1.5 kilowatt spindle, but I should be able to drill this aluminum no problem. For the rough bean and the contouring, I'll be using this Datron 6mm single flute. And for the countersink, I'll actually be 3D milling it with this Datron 6mm single flute ball mill. Now, these single flutes from Datron run really well with these kinds of machines. 
due to uh, the fact that they're more tailored to a higher RPM. You can actually take a pretty good chip load and uh, come away with just a fantastic finish. For the facing, I'm going to be using a 14mm Daytron face mill. These are awesome, leave great finishes. They're not really meant for roughing, but they do last a long time and they have a really nice radius edge that, uh, yeah, when pushed right with the right feeds and speeds, make your parts look really nice. But let's get to it. Um, I'm a little scared about this work holding. We were running out of super glue, but uh, yeah, we'll see. This part may fly off the table and hopefully if that happens, We'll get it on video. So the first thing we're going to do is initialize the machine. Now it's heading to the front to initialize the tool uh, change because it needs to measure the offset of that tool just so it knows where to start all of its offsets from. What we're going to do is we're going to start off with the Lakeshore Carbide Center Drill and this has a small point so it'll make it easy to just roughly pick up this corner. And I have plenty of stock around so it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll notice I only have one collet nut and that's because this is a balanced collet nut and on 24,000 RPM spindles you have to be Pretty careful about the balance, especially if you're pushing the RPM. And uh, ask me how I know. <laughs> definitely hear that something's wrong. It will definitely make a difference. But currently, I only have one, so that's what we're going to stick to. All right. Tools inserted. It will touch the tool off. All right, and now we are ready to find our origin point. Uh, we did measure, so no. All right, now we jog, find our zeros. You might notice that when I'm zeroing this part, it's a little slow and clunky. It's because I'm usually used to my tablet running the uh, carbide motion and it's in front of me, whereas this uh, laptop was on the side, so I had to keep looking back and forth. However, it worked, and uh, yeah, you can also use a gamepad controller, which I've had one of those before, but uh, I don't know. Maybe again, maybe I'll get another one. You'll notice I'm checking the Z height in many different areas. It's mainly because I wasn't really sure about how flat that super glue tape setup was holding and I wanted to make sure I just wasn't, you know, 20, 30 thou high on one side. So I checked front to back and side to side. So now it's time to post all of our tool paths and run the program. Because this is the paid version of Fusion, I'm able to do tool changes. As you'll notice, each tool has a different number. And that number is what tells Carbide to stop the program and initiate a tool change. Let's select all our tool paths. Select the first one, shift, select the last one. Right click, post process. We did select the right post, Carbide 3D. Output folder. I'm going to go to the desktop. I'm going to call this. Uh, 
<laughs> test part. HDM. All right, I uh, don't have to do anything else. Post. Desktop, save. I'm gonna go into the motion, run, load new file. Test part HDM, open. Loading the G code. Start the job. Hit start. And now the machine initiates first full change. Now to make some chips. The first tool we have going up is a 14 millimeter two flute. And like I said before, awesome tool. It's just, uh, it's not cheap. Now you'll see the tool go over and probe its height. And the machine does that after every tool change just to re-update its Z offset. I'm using a light mist from a Trico micro drop and I'm running just regular coolant that we run in the Haas, which technically you're not supposed to do this in the Trico, but it runs pretty well. The consistent cutting sound of the front to back facing definitely lets you know that this is a rigid machine. Most machines that are a little, you know, more on the hobby side, you'll notice from uh, conventional and climb cutting on the face that you'll have different heights, you'll have deflection, but this was nice, smooth, consistent, clean. Hmm. <laughs> the drill. This is my favorite part. Mainly because usually don't run drills in hobby machines. They're not powerful enough or they're not strong enough. Uh, the spindle is not strong enough. The uh, axial forces on a drill are actually pretty decent. Look at how fast that runs. It's like 40 inches per minute. It's beautiful. And you know we had to do an instant replay of that. If you're bored of the drilling, just skip ahead, but I'm not gonna apologize for showing this again. It's just awesome. Next up, we had the Daytron 6mm Single Flute 4-in-1. My ramp down was real nice and uh, healthy. But as you can see, when I get to full depth for my adaptive, my radial depth of cut isn't huge. It's probably a third of what, you know, I probably should have been running. But again, I wanted to minimize my lateral forces on that tape. Cutting full depth though was great. No chatter, machine handled it just fine. In the finish of the final part, you can hardly see any faceting. So my ramp was pretty healthy, but also, not as aggressive as it could have been because of the work holding. And you will see that at a certain point in time, 
the outside piece did pop up and that was because like I said before I didn't really think of my material and uh, what I was going to be leaving on the table and uh, yeah that's not good to do it's not good for your tools when that springs like that and definitely don't do what I did and pick up the piece of material that was going to fall off um, yeah don't do that Now we put in a Datron 6mm single flute ball mill and with this end mill we were going to rough out the chamfers on the hole and this is actually one of the first times I've ever used a ball mill to rough but it worked great we took a decent chip load and it just it, it looks good uh, <laughs> it reminds me of some of the Datron videos only they're going like I don't know a million times faster after I roughed out those chamfers, I came in with a ramp from the top, also taking a little bit uh, too small of a step over actually on that, and still came out with a good finish, but I did play with the tolerances after we made this part, just to have less points on the toolpath, so it was a little bit less jerky, however, the finish was still beautiful. And last but not least, we have our little center drill. And call it what you want, I call it the tiny engraver because that's what I usually use it for, is small engraving because of its very large tip angle. The tip is pretty strong and that this tool will engrave in steel, it'll engrave in aluminum. However, you need to know that a small depth of cut takes you a pretty long way. I also chamfered this part with this tool, little 5 thou chamfers, just to see how accurate the machine was and, you know, if we could. As this tool pass starts, you'll see me looking in and uh, giving it a not very approving look, mainly because I did goof a little bit in the cam and my step downs were a little off. My first step down barely took any and my second step down took too much. As you can hear, it was a little bit too aggressive of a cut. super super happy with the way it came out even with my little cam mistakes but nobody's perfect especially the first time i love how when you use a super glue tape setup you can do full depth contours on your part without having to worry about anything else and there you go this is what this part could look like if you wanted to make it on your hdm i didn't do anything special and yes i use nice tools and i use fusion but is a very capable machine. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and it was fun making it. Stay tuned for the feeds and speeds. See you next time.